Um, we are now recording to the cloud and this meeting at some point will be uploaded to the YouTube channel by IT and I wish you all a good meeting. Thank you, and Angela. Sure, Sean, I'm making you the host. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I guess I think we just hit nine o'clock. So um, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, we have a quorum. So I am going to call the meeting to order at 9 a.m. And since we're conducting it by Zoom, I need to look across my screen and make screen and make sure every one can see and be heard. And thank you all for joining us. So I'm just going to uh, call out the names as I see them and just let me know you can see and be heard. Sean Magnano? Yes. Allison? And yes. Jonathan? Morning. Morning. Phoebe? Hello. Hi. Mike? Present. Margaret Wood has also joined us, and she's going to um, be the lead today to explain what has happened. Ben Harrington? Yep, here. Paul? Hi, good morning. Rupert? Yes, hello. Am I muted? Uh, you're not muted now. That's great. We can hear you. And Steve Schreiber, who's making a, a <laughs> sincere effort to participate even from an airplane. Hi, Steve. Can you hear and hear Hi. us? I, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, as you know from the uh, uh, meeting notes that Margaret sent everyone, we are not meeting today to review designer submissions. Um, and she'll explain to you what happened and what the consequences. We, um, we do not, I think our current date for the MSBA review, Margaret, is November 2nd. Is that That's correct? That's right. Yeah, the applications will be reviewed and November so, 2nd. So maybe I'll turn this over to you right now to explain when we will be able to review them, you know, what the schedule is between now and then. Um, and everyone on this on the screen right now, we're a full committee of reviewers. So uh, we didn't ask at the last meeting if people want to create a subcommittee. I'm if if people don't want to be reviewers, they can let us know during that meeting and we can create a subgroup. But otherwise, the review process for us, and Margaret will give us the dates, will be we will get to read all of them. Three of us then will go to the MSBA panel. When we're reading them together, we won't be rating them like one, two, three, four, but we will be doing really strong here, not so great here. So a set of comments on all of them. And then the three people who will be going to the MSBA panel review are Mike, me, and Ben. So we will have notes, um, chronicle notes from everybody's comments. And we will take that in where that then will become a short list and turn into an interview list. So Margaret, maybe you can describe what when when will we be looking at these um, and we haven't set another meeting date yet for that review we haven't um, so good morning everybody um, so I'm gonna just cut to the chase and answer the, the question that Kathy just prompted which is um, on September 9th I mean essentially what we ended up having was a bid extension. I'll go back into why that happened. The bid, is, bid has been, or the ability for designers to submit sub, uh, proposals has been extended to September 9th. So on September 9th, um, all of the applications are sort of in the public realm and will be um, circulated to all of you. Um, then we have a pretty long stretch of time relative to where we were before, as Kathy said, to November 2nd to meet. Um, now, the, the good news about that is Kathy's actually away for an extended period of time in September. So I'm assuming that what we're going to want to do in terms of that next meeting to look at the designer applications will be during the period that she's back. Um, then, as Kathy described, we'll meet, we'll summarize comments for the three folks who are going to the designer selection panel to digest. They'll go with as representatives of the entire committee, not just themselves. And then um, at that meeting on the second, they will shortlist 
three, occasionally they do four, but typically it's three who will participate in an interview. And the interviews are about two weeks later. I don't remember the date off the top of my head, but it's, it's two weeks from the second. So it must be the 17th, if, yeah. Um, and on the 17th, they'll have the interviews. Each one will be a little less than an hour. Um, everybody will be able to tune in and I think they record them. I can certainly ask them to record them if they don't. Um, and out of that um, will come the selection. The way the selection process works is there's about 12 people on the selection committee and each of them gets a piece of paper and in the interview prep, both in the um, application review process and the interview process, they each get to sort of vote their one, two, three, and then whoever gets the highest number of points um, is the number one. So then um, the next step will be for us to negotiate a um, fee with them. And there is a kind of um, clause that says if we can't come to an agreement about a fee, which is quite unusual, I will tell you, um, then you can actually go to the number two ranked firm. So that's how this has changed, which is that instead of having the designer on board in approximately mid-October, it will be mid-November. Anybody have any questions about that? Um, I, Margaret, the one I would have, and then I'll, I'll talk about a uh, timeline for us meetings. So um, when the interviews happen, um, would it be a good idea at the point we are reviewing the designer proposals to come up with some draft interview questions then that we would particularly like, or would we do that? Uh, you know, I'm just thinking of get people's thoughts on what they, once there is a short list, because if there's only two weeks between when the panel meets and when the interviews take place, I'd like to at least, you know, Get oh yeah. yeah, we yes, I totally agree. We don't have to wait until we see the applications. Okay. Um, and in fact, one of the things that's come up um, in the past few weeks that I think would be a great question for the interviews for your consideration is to ask the interviewees to talk about daylighting. It, it's one of those things that I know has been discussed a lot in the community. I know there's at least one um, very concerned citizen, um, but it's. Margaret, are you frozen? Oh dear. I think Margaret is frozen. Oh, now you're moving. We lost, what, if you continued saying words, we didn't hear you, Margaret, just then. Can you see me now? Yeah, we can see okay. you, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was just saying that's a good um, type of question for an interview. This, it's more qualitative. Okay. So, you know, the, this happened because there was a step that didn't happen in time of posting it in the local newspaper. And so it has now been posted. So that's why we, we, we lost that month. Um, so, um, but I, I wanna open it up to, for comments or questions. One thought I talked to several people about meeting times and meeting days and a, the mornings Thursday morning seemed to work on a lot of people's schedules um, uh, starting with both Paul and Mike and Margaret making sure they could and I wanted to uh, propose that we that would be Thursdays will be our regular meeting and I will be back September 23rd then could be the date which will give us a good two weeks before to read them, Margaret. Mm -hmm. So if we could have the meeting, a full meeting, the the longer meeting that was scheduled. So I just wanted to find out if that time works for people and if people can start as early as 7.30 in the morning if we do it, but that Thursday. If that doesn't work, we still have time to do it. The, the next one would be the very last week in September. So I just, so again, I, I want to find out from everyone who's on this call, A, whether you would like to be the re a reader at that meeting, and can you make a longish meeting, like a two-hour meeting, 
on a Thursday morning. So I'm just throwing that out to anyone and everyone to respond with a, yes, I wanna be part of it. The time doesn't work right for me. And yes, Jonathan. I can certainly make that day and I can do a two hour meeting. Starting at 7.30 will be difficult because kids will be back in school. And uh, so I would prefer a time to start say just after the bus or school drop off. So does but that does work for Mike. <laughs> Does does eight o'clock then is that is that move it enough, Jonathan? So if we start at eight, you know what I what I'd like to do is if we say that would be our regular starting time, then it's not a one time that so it'll be th you know what whatever Thursday will be our regular day and eight would be our starting time. Does is that a problem for anyone? Okay, uh, Allison. You need to unmute. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little worried because of that, just because uh, Tuesday, Thursday are um, IEP meeting days for us. Um, so I, I would have some conflicts sometimes. Okay. As long as you would be some days be able to do it, because I my sense is if we try another day, we're going to find, you know, it's not that everyone has to make every meeting, but I think there will be important meetings just were decisions or and your input is always uh welcome you we're down two members right now um so i think by the next meeting date i mean paul, paul is I, I guess between paul and mike will be filling those slots um and figuring out what we do but so any so, any just, other just on yeah. that front kathy um yeah so i have a memo that will go to the council shortly. Um, and uh, the council, I think, would vote on September or whatever it is. So it'll be, we'll have a full complement before that meeting date. Okay. Yeah. Because the council meets on September 13th. So it right. would be for that date. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we'll be back up. So I'm assuming that everyone would like to, uh, everyone on this call and uh, those that will be coming um, would like to be part of the reading of the designer proposals. You know what what they what in the as you remember with from the RFS it will they will tell us who their team is with a profile of each member and then there's a part in the document that's part of the MSBA format where they write us more you know about what they're thinking about the sites. And Margaret will be able, when she sends these out to us, to tell us whether all of the firms or whether only a subset of the firms actually came to the site visits, because she has a list. Uh, Rupert was there with a terrific guiding us through Fort River. But we have a list of who actually came and looked, looked at the, um, and they, they came when they came, they looked at both Fort River and Wildwood you know, to get a sense of the two possible places the school would be located. So there's a part in the responses where they can, um, to the extent they want to, can start talking about what their thinking is about the locations and what might be possible. So I, I think those that's the main um, updating you on the schedule. So I think what we'll do, Margaret and I had worked out a fairly detailed um, set of meetings, um, thinking that we were going to start in full bore in the middle of October. So now we'll move that uh, a month. And I had had uh, one conversation with Allison, chair of the school committee, on your schedule, Mike, on the education program side and some potential joint meetings where the school building committee would meet with the school committee when we're you know, talking about uh, issues that, so the designer wouldn't have to meet with both of us. So we came up with some ideas for that or tentative. And so we'll be able to share that uh, set of possible meeting dates when we meet on the 23rd, if September 23rd works from everyone. Um, so we'll send, set up a time starting at eight in the morning and I'm hoping we can do that in a two hour meeting of do the review. We may not be able to go over the timeline, but at least we can give it to everyone and then we can meet again. The intensity of the meetings won't start till the middle of, of November. Um, so we can probably get away with 
not starting to meet. Our schedule had us starting to meet almost weekly or every other week, but I don't think that will have to happen now that we're not meeting until November 2nd. But again, we'll, we'll look at that. So the one other item on the list, and Sean has it, we have invoices from Answer that, uh, Sean, you said, we need to be paying Margaret. And um, she, she had to do a little do, a double time here because it was posted and then it had to get reposted. And the reposting had to give the responders a new set of deadlines that we're working from. So uh, she had to do those, that addendum twice. So Sean, do you wanna um, introduce us to the invoices? And then I think we have to vote on these, is that correct? On the payment, yeah. Yeah, so I'll share my screen in a second, just walk you through the two invoices we have um, so far, so. And actually while Sean's doing that, I just wanna say, um, the way um, the owner's project manager contracts work is that we have a, a contract that we negotiated. In this case, I negotiated with Paul and Sean um, to get our contract executed that is uh, a not to exceed number. And then our billing is done on a more or less an hourly basis with detail. So what you're gonna see here on the front is the total of how much I build in a given month. So the invoice that's up here is for our my June work. Well, our June, June work, because it's also some of Bob Stevens' time. And then in the following pages, it sort of shows uh, the description of what those tasks were. Yeah. So this first one is for June for $4,365. Um, and the rates are consistent with it, the contracts that we signed. And the second one, hopefully it popped up on the screen as well, is for July for $7,355. And so our contract has rates for different types of positions and these rates are uh, consistent with the contract for those positions. Um, and then just to round out the discussion, what I do is once we approve these invoices, we have a sheet that we track them and compare them to the, the not to exceed amount. Um, and I've got to work with the MSBA to figure out whether we need to submit these to the MSBA because we're not anticipating reimbursement, but I think we still have to enter them into the ProPay. Um, the ProPay is the MSBA's uh, website uh, program for tracking costs and, and managing the reimbursements. Um, so I think I still have to enter them for now, even though we're not going to potentially get reimbursed for these invoices, but um, yeah. It so. will definitely speed up the reimbursement to the town yeah. um, once the project moves to the next stage. The other thing I wanted to say, just for everyone to know, is we do, for, we're not allowed as part of our MSBA contract to charge travel expenses. So when you see these rates, they are um, they embedded in them as you know, the cost of mileage and gas and all those kinds of things. So there's no, uh, it's, it's, it makes it easier to review because you all don't have to look at reimbursables. It's all embedded in the hourly rates. So are there any questions on the, the June or July invoices? Uh, so then I would, I'll make a motion that we approve payment of the invoices. Second. And I think I need to do a roll call vote on this. So um, Sean, can you pull your screen back down again? Yes. Okay, just so I can make sure I get everyone. So again, I'm just gonna go through the names as I see them. And if you're in favor, say either I or yes. Allison? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. Mike? We lost Mike. We lost Mike. Okay. Ben? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Sean? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Mike? Yes. <laughs> Steve? Yes. And Kathy is a yes. So that is a unanimous vote to pay Margaret <laughs> and to thank Margaret. Um, Thank you, Margaret, for getting us to this point. So um, I, you know, uh, for whatever is happening on the screen, I can't right now open it up to public comments, but Sean, I'll ask you to, but I just want to see if there are any other 
questions, uh, comments people want to make, including um, would anyone, when we get the, uh, I want to make sure everyone has a copy of the RFS that we put on, that the responders are reacting to, because in that we laid out some design features that we'd like to be considered. So when we're reading them, that's something to, to look at that list. So I don't know whether people uh, have any other questions um, on next steps, questions, concerns, comments, and I'm not seeing anything. So I then I'm going to ask Sean to see whether there's anybody in the public who has a hand up and Paul is saying no, because I can't even see that. I don't know. Yeah, there's, I... we have no attendees right now. Okay. So then I think this meeting is adjourned and I want to say special thanks to Jonathan, who is in Cape Cod and managed to dial in to Steve Schreiber, who seems to be on an airplane and managed to dial in. <laughs> um, and for all of those who are in the school world who are about to welcome all of our students back in or have your children back in, this is great that you were willing to join at the end of August. Thank you very much. And we look forward yes. to moving forward. The meeting Bye, is adjourned. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, team. Bye -bye. All right.